Good morning, Matteo. Good morning, thank Annalisa. You. Thank you for uh, accepting my invitation. So um, we are here to, to give some tips and hints to our dear participants to the 10th edition of March Challenge. So uh, I, I contacted you because you were one of the judges in one of the grand final, if I'm not wrong, 2019 or something like this. So um, it, it is a pleasure to welcome you here. And then uh, the idea is that today you are here in um, uh, as a professional working in, uh, in a field that is strongly connected to our dear customers. So the ultra high net worth individuals. Can you tell me more about your job and, and your role? I am the Chief Marketing Officer at Vista. Vista is the largest on-demand business aviation provider in the world. And it's renowned uh, around the world for its innovation and for its service excellence. Mm. So, um, thank you. Mark Challenge projects can be based on B2B and B2C business, business models. So, in both cases, um, the end client are high net and ultra high net worth individuals. So, can you help us to understand who they are and what they like? Let's start from removing a myth. Uh, a high net worth individual or an ultra high net worth individual and even a billionaire, they're human beings. <laughs> so let, let's start from there, right? Um, the difference between uh, the people we, we might find on the street on a daily basis and interact with more regularly is that they tend to have a lot more information and they have a, a team at hand to analyze opportunities. So whether it's a corporation or a family office, they are both in the business of growth and they try to source the best tools uh, to achieve their goals, uh, to be more efficient, solving problems. And when you look at their personal life, of course, uh, being uh, more pleasing solutions. So you mentioned something that is very interesting. So they are, they have access to information. So what is the trigger, the main trigger to set a business with somebody to buy something and a product or a service, according to you? What, what they typically look for, because they know what is out there in the market. They look for solutions that are easy. They look for understanding that you're dedicated to them. So your responsiveness levels are critical and also the transparency. They don't want to be taken around for a walk, right? They know exactly what they're after. So it's about how you become the expert they rely on for their choices. They're only looking for the best in class. So you can constantly advise them on how to do things better, how to get things better, or what is coming and they should know about. Because traditionally, if you're the expert, they, you should know, uh, you should have more visibility into what the future is bringing and so future proof their spend, their investment, the services they select. OK, so one of the most important aspects uh, I think I heard is about the, the experiential element. So if you're buying a product or if you're buying um, a service. So uh, is it the same for you as well? Of course, as service providers, so it should be the case. For us as service providers is always starting with the listening mode. Um, you really cannot give a standardized service. So you need to listen, try to understand the real needs, uh, and there is no predefined solutions. The only thing you can do as a luxury provider is be sure that you can adapt around them and building the resources you need to be able to say yes, to be able to tap into them, to satisfy their needs, and really create something that works for them. Okay, because I think so they have access to whatever they want, basically. Yep, absolutely. They have choice, right? Uh, having uh, wealth means that you can decide how to spend it. And so you are not limited by a price point. You can decide to move up and down the scale if the product is worth it. The concept of value is the predominant one more than price. So the price is not the only determinant in this case. No, it's value. What do I get for that amount? Yeah. OK, so is the is the ultimate benefit. Very interesting. Um, so if I uh, if I understand correctly your business, you're, you're selling your services to 
companies and people, so B2B and B2C. And actually, this is also reflect a bit the, 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 the participations to, to Mark Challenge, so they can set up businesses for other companies as a intermediary uh, as an intermediary or while well, uh, dealing directly with customers is the approach so um, is the approach to b2b or b2c um is the same or is it different or any suggestion how new entrepreneurs can set their business model they're, they're completely different even if the flight is the same uh, if the service we provide is ultimately the same is a private jet flight um, the way you deliver the service is completely different. So think about this. A corporation is made of processes. Thousands of people uh, working in unison as a perfectly oiled machine to deliver an output. What is important as a service provider is that you need to fit into their own processes. So what, you, what they look for is standards of services. They need to know what is going to happen when they engage with you. How do you fit within their organization? Who do they speak to? What time you pick up the phone? How quickly you respond? What are the prices? Everything needs to be set up in advance. And mm. then they will ask you for additional flexibility later on. When you're dealing with uh, individuals, it's all about the emotional value. So first you offer the service, but then the additional element that you're providing is not the predictability, is actually the additional um, feelings you can generate. So it's the service aspect, uh, not on the functional side, but on the emotional side that becomes more important. We've done uh, um, campaigns on pets, on kids, uh, on uh, finding your families, uh, incredible holidays, enriching moment to learn. Uh, very different from when I go to a corporation and I start laying down uh, how they're going to be supported every minute of their day to make sure that they can conduct business. Very different things. And sometimes the people we talk to are both. They are a CEO during the day and at night they are with the families or in the weekend they are with friends. So it can be the same person, but the pitch and the way you provide the service and the way to, you make it fit a different mindset is really, really different. So our participants should really keep in mind the, the, this difference when they are designing the, the the process. Okay, and then how they provide well, the. Even product you are not the same person when you wake up uh, in the morning and you have your daughter to take to school, and when you are in a classroom or when you are presenting at a conference, right? You need different things and different types of service, and it might be that the same phone provides you different services or provides services in a slightly different way, even if it's the same device in your hand, right? because mm -hmm. they need to adapt around uh, your requirements and your predisposition and your goals. So the KYC meme is really important. Really true, yeah. <laughs> so know your customer yeah. first before setting whatever you do. Okay. Exactly. So for your work, you meet companies and then uh, you always looking for additional services that you can provide in order to trigger their, their attention, correct? So you're always, I see you uh, on Instagram and many places showing that you're discovering many beautiful things, but to find something new for your customers, correct? It's so, absolutely correct. Um, how, um, uh, can you give me some examples of uh, incredible, uh, that can be inspiring, of incredible services that you have identified that you are offered to your customers? Well, first, it comes from the realization that we are only as good as our core product. We should not try to be expert in everything. There are incredible people around the world, and you want to create a network of experts to deliver around your service. So partnerships are critical to us. But also try to think of how we can embed partnerships within our services. We partnered with Ferrari to have a behind the scenes chance uh, of staying with the engineers and really build a car for you to start racing, not just watch F1 on TV. We partner with Golden Vines, which is the Oscars of wine, uh, to make sure that our customers not only drink a good bottle of wine, not only collect good wine, but can go and meet and invest in the winemakers themselves by getting to know them in person. We fly golfers and we arrange uh, private clinics uh, for our members to meet the golfers and learn how to play golf uh, or meet them on the most incredible courses. I think the whole 
ultra is worth and highly worth idea is that you get access not to the marketing teams. You get access to the makers. You get access to the real experts, not the cohorts around it, not just the, the sales uh, uh, apparatus uh, or, um, or other functions. You go straight to the source. And I think that is, of course, the liberty you have because when you invest more, of course, there is an interest from the um, from companies to engage directly. And that is what is so incredible about working with a high net worth and ultra high net worth individuals. You get to see the faces of these people. It, there's no nothing in between. It becomes a much more direct and going back to the beginning, much more human interaction again. You mentioned two important things, so I like it, the, the the accent on the on the human interaction. So it's human to human, especially uh, well, you are in the service industry, but not only. So even you are selling products, this is this is extremely important. Um, so developing this kind of luxury attitude, let's call it in this way, no? Correct. Absolutely, absolutely. And the other important thing that you're mentioning is, uh, so you give me the idea, like if you are uh, a kind of concierge company, so you are not simply offering the, your typical service, but you are adding additional opportunities. Well, imagine this, when you are on a plane, do you think of it as time well spent? No, it's time lost. How can I transform time loss into meaningful time? I can only do it if I capture what your passion is and I embed that into that time. So I, sh I sell time, right? I will, private jets shorten the time of a flight, but how can every minute be enriching instead of just being fast? And that I think is what makes the whole difference. Mm -hmm, definitely. And pr time is the priceless uh, um, thing that especially our dear customers uh, have. Yes. Correct. So, um, any final tips for our dear participants to this 10th edition of March Challenge? Meet your customers, meet your customers, meet your customers, spend time with them, listen to them, live with them. Don't try to be smarter than them. Try to become a partner of your customer. Try to solve their problems, not yours. Mm -hmm. Solve their problems, actually. So, we are closing this interview from a what to me is the is the starting point of any entrepreneurial idea. So identify a problem and then based on this, you try to solve it. So perfect conclusion, okay. Matteo. <laughs> Thank nice you so much. Care. See you in person. And see you on, on the 16th at the grand final, of course. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. bye.